AutoGeek.net has everything you need to keep your vehicle looking its best. Mothers, Meguiar's, Wolfgang, Diamond Eye, 3M, Pinnacle, and more. AutoGeek.net carries over 60 brands. AutoGeek's selection is huge, our prices are low, our expert staff can answer any question you have, and we ship right to your door. AutoGeek.net. We are Car Care. Hey, welcome back to Helping in the Heartland. We are live to you guys here in Lincoln, Nebraska. And I gotta tell you, I'm starting to feel a whole lot better. I don't know if it's because the medication's starting to kick in or the energy we've got in the room right now. You know, these guys are really cranking away our Auto Geek A team. And it uh, doesn't hurt that we've got the doctor overseeing things. And he's got his younger son here as well as all part of the process. Now, like I said, a lot of work's getting done. We gotta check in with Mike here to give us a status update as to what actually has been done and what needs to get done yet today, Mike. So. You're looking at a panel here. With, this is the front fender. Uh, things are starting to look pretty good. Yeah, we're really moving right along here. Actually, uh, every panel's been sanded and compounded, except for we're just finishing up the fender. So this has been completely sanded and compounded. It's ready for polishing. And like we said before, we're going to do that later. I'm knocking out the compounding step here to remove the sanding marks. Those guys are doing the last bit of sanding on the top of that fender. The bottom side's already been sanded and compounded. So we've got the hood done, the door's done, we've got the chunk lid done. Yep, all done. So basically, we are in the home stretch with this, and then we can start to tackle the shell. Yep, the body shell's next. Are you getting a little worried about the body shell? It seems like it's one of those projects you, you kick to the corner, pretend it's going to go away, but it's not going to go away. <laughs> no, I'm not worried about it at all. You know, everybody here, their techniques are honed and ready to go, and. Uh, we got good lighting in here, and nah, that's that's gonna be a piece of cake. Calm, cool, collected, no panic for Mike. All right, strong leader, buddy, right here, we got him. We're in the zone right now, so. All right, and the guy we've been waiting to talk to for a while here, doctor, we please come over for a few seconds. Uh, you know, we've talked a lot about you for the last day, day and a half now, and now it's time to hear your side of the story, because you're the reason we're all here. You know, Wes, obviously a big fan of yours. He's spoken very highly of you for the last few weeks to me and to everybody here in the room. Tell us, what's it like to walk into a room and see people dedicated to a project that means so much to you? Well, it's just amazing. I mean, I just had no idea all this went into uh, to doing this. I, when we first talked to Wes about this, I thought we might get a couple of cans of Craylon and shoot her good, you know, and call it done, but no, there's more to it, and it's going to really turn out beautiful. All right, so give us some backstory on this whole process. I know Wes has talked a lot about it, but from your point of view, this AMC, what does it mean to you? Well, <clears throat> this is the car that Josh, when he turned 16, he wanted one of these, and it's kind of because you know, we're kind of an AMC family, and we kind of grew up around them, and, and so we searched high and low, where Josh did, found this car in Quinter, Kansas. Uh, been in storage for like 20 years. Uh, we went down there, looked at it, decided to bring it home. Uh, went to Napa, got him a dozen fuel filters, and sent him on his way. And he got home with it. Nice. So, That's always uh, a bonus. And uh, so he drove the car all through high school. And I, I threatened him a couple of times, telling him that if he didn't take care of this car, that I was going to make a race car out of it. And so basically when he left for college, we decided not to take the car to college because we thought it might get stolen or vandalized or something, you know. So I did put a cage in it and did racket race it a while while he was gone. He did, he, and he did know that. But then I parked it, and it was parked in my barn for 20 years. And uh, does that make 40, 50? I mean, that's, it's an old car. And um, then I got to talking to Josh one day, and he said, yeah, I should do something with that car, you know, and I just can't afford it, and we don't have any time. And, and uh, I said, yeah, well, maybe we can do something. And so I called Wes and I said, hey, I want to build a street, a street car. And uh, so we got to talking about it and kind of the rest is history. All right, so let's back up a little bit. You've got a history. You're a humble guy, so you're not going to bring it on unless I drag it out. You've got a history with these AMCs dating back through your teenage years. Right. Tell everybody a little bit about that. Well, in high it's school. It's a neat story. In high school, uh, the American Motors dealer's son was in my class. Came to school one day and said his dad would like to start a car club. Well, fine, let's do that. You know, everybody was interested. And so his dad bought us a brand spanking new, shiny 1968 AMX, and we put it in stock class and started driving it. And about halfway through that season, the American Motors took notice because we were a bunch of kids, and, and we had our bowling shirts and our saddle shoes, and we were winning best appearing crews and all that sort of thing. 
And so they offered us uh, one of the new Super Stalkers that, was com- that were coming out. Nice. And, and so they, uh, uh, one morning in Kearney, a uh, transport showed up with the Super Stalker on it. We put it together, raced it, uh, won the division that year, and run it up at Indy. And, and uh, so we have, you know, we have fond memories of these cars. So as a teenager, you're racing a car that's funded from... You know, uh, 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 from American manufacturing, from uh, a, a dealer itself, or from um, you know manufacturer itself. You go to Indy, you run her up at Indy as a teenager, and you're racing against legends of drag racing because people don't realize that back in those days, pro stock didn't exist. It this was pro stock. This back was then. pro stock. And who, who, a few of the names of people you're racing against at the time: Rumpy Jenkins, Sox and Martin, Judy Lilly. You know, mm-hmm. name go John Hagen. They go on and on. Legends of the sport as a teenager. Yeah. So it was like a dream come true. Yeah, absolutely. So. To say that this car, you know, has a history with you and that whole AMC thing is an understatement, so to speak. Yeah, basically. And these are the pinnacle, in my opinion, the pinnacle of the AMC uh, movement. I mean, they just had beautiful lines. They were very fast. Uh, they were muscle cars. Uh, everybody discounted them, you know. And uh, not that we ever street raced with them, but, uh, you know, people on the street respected them. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, you know, getting back to, to this project itself, you know, <clears throat> what do you envision or, or what did you have in mind in terms of a finished product? What are you looking for here? Well, I'm looking for something that you can go to cruise night with, drive them up and down the street on Sunday afternoon. That's why we went with the Chevrolet motor in this, because we wanted a computer motor. We wanted something that sounded nice, something that could be tuned, something that could drive. Um, these kids today uh, didn't grow up with carbureted cars, and the motor that was in this car was basically a super stock motor, so it wasn't going to street very well. Right. And so uh, we just Wes and I decided we put a, a nice drivable car or engine in it, and so this is something that you're going to take for Sunday afternoon drives, go to cruise night, jump in the store and get the milk, you know, that kind of thing. It's going to be driven. It's not going to set. See, I like that. The vehicle, you know, we're putting in time into making this a show car. You've got the best detailer in the world sitting right here, finishing out the paint job on this thing. The House of Colors paint. It's beautiful. Most people, well, I shouldn't say that. A lot of people would just trailer and use it as a show vehicle. I like the fact that this thing's actually being driven out on the road and enjoyed. That, to me, is cool. Um, Will there be a roll bar back in this thing? Can I ask that? No. No? No. I probably shouldn't have taken that out because I've seen a couple examples of restored AMXs that have the cages in them still. But they're hard to get the passenger in and out and, and all that sort of thing. So, no, there won't be a roll bar back in. But well, we might. Track uh, time. Well, we might. Uh, uh, you know, since I have a nice racetrack two miles from my house, and I know the guys pretty well, uh, we probably can let it. They'll probably let us make a pass. But it's going to have cal tracks and and the whole nine yards. So we pull some slicks on this thing. It'll probably stand on it on the bumper. <laughs> that would so be fun. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, that's kind of, uh, you know, you'd be able to have the, the feel of it, I guess, with a, that big of a motor putting in this little yeah. thing. You know, the big power to weight ratio. Yeah. That should be, it could be a handful. Oh, it could be fun. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah, cool. It could be fun. So when, it, when is the finished project? When do you get to hand this thing over? Well, the, the, the plan is the 23rd, which is Sunday, I think. Okay. And we're going to go up and, uh, Josh lives in Rapid City. Uh, South Dakota, and, and I go up there all the time with a trailer on because I take stuff for the kids and all that stuff. So he won't think a thing about me having a trailer on. Uh, and then uh, we've thought a dozen different ways to. What I originally kind of wanted to do was sneak it into the garage and let him just kind of find it. But I don't think I can get him out of the house long enough for that to happen. So I think I'm just going to tell him that, that his cranky old uncle, who's my brother, um, told me I had to get it out of the barn because it was just in the way. and. I said, well, I'm just going to drag it up here, and you can decide what to do with it, and he won't know that it's been been overhauled. Yeah. yeah, that's very cool, very cool surprise. So he has no idea any of this is happening right I now. I don't think he does, unless he's happened to stumble on some of the things that we're putting on the internet here. He's got two, three little kids under three. I don't think he has much time to surf. So. No, I've got two, two little ones, and I'll tell you, you don't have much time to do anything. Yeah. So yeah, I think his, his secret is safe. Hopefully, for the time being, yeah. and, and even if he does find out about it, it'll be it'll be amazing. He just won't be quite as yeah, you know, so much of a surprise, I think, because we got it planned. But I don't think you'll find out about it. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Uh, yeah, I 
can't tell you how, how cool a project this has been for me to be involved with, and I think everybody here at AutoGeek. We've got volunteers from our forum that have come out to be part of it. You've got a bunch of volunteers. Later on today, we're going to have more hands on deck. We've got some local guys coming in, friends of Wes's, who help him out quite a bit, get this thing wrapped up and finished later today. And then at that point, we turn the keys over to this guy, and he's got to get all the work done by that deadline. No pressure, Wes. The 23rd, it's got to get all happened. So, guys, yeah, stay with us today. We've got one more live feed coming at 2 o'clock and a lot of work to get done and some new guys to introduce you guys to. So stay with us. We'll be back in a few hours.